Bye. Chaz Chowdhury, Pep Talk UK, joined by a chap who's making waves. He's got a nickname that I absolutely love. It's the Black Thunder, Kiva Najaka. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, Hodge. Thanks. All good. Where are you at the moment? London? Back in Ireland, Belfast? Um, no, I'm in London. I'm training camp, so uh, just preparing for my next vote. Rumour has it there's a little title on the line for your next fight. Yeah, um, I should be fighting for the WBC International. Um, I think that's confirmed. No opponent just yet. Um, I can't announce the date just yet, but um, it should be it should be out this week or early next. Well, I'm just going to open up my diary and leave it blank for the rest of the year. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever it lands, I'm just going to pencil it in. Have to be at that point. <laughs> just try and make it in London. I think... Yeah, I've seen you at York Hall a couple of times now. It's around the corner for me. So I quite like seeing you at York Hall. Plus, you've had some good results, good fights at York Hall as well. So yeah. I'd like to see you see you nice and local to me. Now, um, going back, um, is it four years this week that there was a there was a a devastating incident whereby you were stabbed um, in the neck? Um, I've been reading up on it. Talk me through it. What happened? What are your recollections of it? Yeah, do you know, I don't have much memory from, from that night. Um, I was just back from a from a multi nation tournament out in Paris when I was was an amateur. Um, I'd won the gold medal, and I was kind of out the week after with my girlfriend at the time, um, celebrating. Uh, I was in terms of celebrating, I wasn't drinking or anything because I was meant to fight the week after that against America. Um, Left the club early, went round to McDonald's to get food. Um, and it was just a, a, a group of lads, about 20 to 30 of them. Um, it, it started an argument. One thing's led to another, end up in a bit of a competition, um, end up fighting. And then next thing I've, I've been stabbed. Um, then the side of my, my face, kind of um, that kind of thing. So I uh, ended up in the hospital for three, four days and um, was in an inch from there. But thankfully, I'm, I'm still here. Um, not only are you still after such a horrific incident, incident five months later, you went on to win a title in Spain. The mental toughness to not only go through a horrific injury like that, but to bounce back and then get back to the boxing and then to go and win in a multi nation tournament in Spain. There must have been points where everything seemed too difficult. What got you going through it? What motivated you? Do you know what? I'd, I've always knew um, what I've wanted to do in life, um, and that was to be a boxer from an early age. Um, no matter what life's thrown at me, um, boxing's always been my, my number one priority. Um, I had a tough enough up, up, upbringing. Um, I've, I've had um, I've had to face of adversity a couple of times um, in life, and. I've always seen boxing as my savior, kind of that that it's my purpose in life or something like that. Um, and I just, although I was going for a hard time um, after getting started, my only fault was to get back to training because I knew that if I didn't, that I'd go down the wrong road or I'd, I'd end up hitting like drink. I've never took drugs or anything like that, but I end up drinking or something to to kind of try and ease the pain of my mind. And I just. I just wanted to get back to training as soon as possible. And although I ended up going back to training too soon um, and because I'd lost so much blood that um, when I was trying to train, I'd, I'd get lightheaded very quickly and feel like I was going to faint. So I had to take um, a bit of time off and then um, I went I went back and uh, I just, I just kind of, I knew that I had to get back to my old self um, sooner rather than later. Um, I didn't want to dwell on things. I'm not. A, I'm not a person that likes to feel sorry for themselves. Um, it's life. Do you know what I mean? Things like this happen. I'm, I'm fortunate. It, it, it was a situation that near took my life, but um, 
I just wanted to get back to my, my normal self and, and back to winning ways and and to prove myself. Um, I didn't want people to brand me as a boxer that got stabbed. You know, what I mean, I want I want to be known as a great great fighter, and um, that was the first step into into doing so. Um, and I wanted to uh, not only that, I wanted to prove things to myself. I wanted to prove that I am the same fighter or a better fighter. This is going to make me mentally stronger. Um, because I kn- I knew if I would have got beat, people would have branded me as not the same fighter. So. I felt like I had something to prove. Signed, pro contract. You're moving on with your career. You've had some good wins already under your belt. Um, Recently, Robbie Chapman, the Camden caretaker. And before that, Jezza Smith, who's who's been hitting hitting the news lately because he put in a a blinding performance in Spain, which, again, uh, being a Londoner, I've seen what Jezza's all about. I've seen him on the small hall circuit. Maybe people at large deny how good he was, but you've been in there. You got a win against him. Um, it probably puts you where I'd want you to be at this stage before your WBC title. That Jezza, having this much experience, has gone and done that in Spain. It just puts you where I'd like you to be in terms of rankings, in terms of how you're doing so early in your career. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm progressing nicely. If you look at my 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 record. I haven't really faced any journeymen, like out and out journeymen. So maybe my first fight, you could say the guy's a journeyman. Um, but you look at my record. I haven't really faced any full blown journeymen. You know I mean, so I'm, I'm progressing with every fight, taking step ups with every fight. And um, the the Jez Smith was a perfect perfect um fight at that stage of my career. Um, a lot of people didn't give me credit for that fight. Um, saying that Jez moved up a weight and stuff like that. But Jez Smith's a very good fighter, very talented, and um. And he's shown that against um Carmen L- L- Raja. Um I felt I felt like it was very um it was stopped prematurely. Um and he and he dropped L- L- Raja twice. Do you know what I mean? L- Raja's known for being a big hitter and he, he dropped him twice. Um so it shows how good Jez is and um obviously it does me a world of good. Um it makes my win look better, do you know what I mean? Um how frustrating is lockdown been with for you in terms of um fights that could have happened, didn't happen? Um, training, being stuck, waiting on news, waiting on news. Opponents messing you about. There's a few we'll come on to. Um, how's the whole of the lockdown been? It's been very frustrating. Um, I, I would have been, I would have liked to have been active um, I, as much as I, I've had two fights last year and a lot of fighters haven't been able to get out. I would have been, I would have had four or five fights last year. Um and I would have fought this year. It has been frustrating not being able to train and stuff as, as much. But do you know what? I've, uh, I'm not somebody that in situations, in negative situations like this, I, I take the positives out of it. Um, so I've just, I've during lockdown, it's given me a lot of time to focus on myself, focus on me as a fighter um, and and improve a lot. Do you know what I mean? I've used this time to improve as a fighter. Um, although I haven't had the, the face to show that. Hopefully, my next bet I'll show how, how much I've improved. But I've had a lot of time to myself and being able to improve as a fighter. And I feel like um, there's no point in taking the negatives out of it. Yes, it's hard for everyone, but um, if you can turn a negative into a positive, then you're, you're going to be benefit. Uh, you're going to benefit from it. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to apologise about something um, because you're probably sick to death. I interviewed a chap two and a half, three weeks ago, um, who now hails from Brighton. Um, good looking lad not my opinion opinion from some of the ladies reality TV star boxer Idris Virgo he wanted the fight he didn't want the fight that you offered the fight what went wrong was it just social media chatter or was that fight ever going to happen it was never going to happen not from his side anyway I'm a fighter I've been I've been doing this since I was seven, eight years old. Um, I've been at the highest of levels in the amateur game. I'm looking to get at the high le- highest of levels in, in the professional game. Um, I'll fight anyone. Do you know what I mean? I know how good I am. Um, I know how talented I am. I, I work hard. Um, I don't, I'm not one of these fighters that go calling names. Um, if I have to, I'll do it in a respect, um, respectful way. I'll never disrespect another fighter because I know how tough this boxing game is. Um, it was never going to happen in the fight. Uh, it just, like you say, he's a reality TV star. 
Do you know what I mean? Yes, he maybe want, he does want to be a boxer and make a career out of it, but does he want to fight the best guys? No, he doesn't. There's, look at his record. He hasn't fought one person with a winning record. I fought four or five uh, fighters with winning records in eight fights. He's had ten, nine, ten fights. He hasn't fought one person with a winning record. His last three opponents have a combined loss of 229. Do you know what I mean? So I'm a fighter. If you want to, if you're serious about fighting this fight, I don't talk. Do you know what I mean? I like to do talking. I like to do my talking in the ring. Um, but listen, I understand the boxing game on, on that side as well. You've got to, you've got to kind of hype yourself up um, when there's not a lot of hype around you. You've got to um, do stuff like that on on social media and call for names, even if you're not going to take the fight, because it gets people talking. I understand that. But with me, I'm not that guy because when push comes to shove and I see you at a boxing event or a show, I will stick it on you and then everyone will see the real side of you. So it's it's one of them things with me that you've got to be very careful on how you speak to me because I don't deal with disrespect. Now, you just made a mistake there, a big one, because you said at a boxing event, if you see someone, you're going to stick it on. It means I'm going to be, if I see you in a crowd, I'm going to be stalking you <laughs> and seeing who the perspective is and say, look, he's over there. See you walk over, get my camera out, follow you, man. Um, do you know what? Is it doesn't make sense for me. Like, I'm not, I'll not name names, but I had another fellow that called me out during, at Christmas time. Um, and we offered him the fight for this fight, WBC International title, eight weeks notice. Didn't t- turn it down. Do you know what I mean? What What are you online talking about? What are you online? I'll do this, that, and the other. And then when you offer the fight, you don't accept it. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. I don't understand these fighters that go on and call for, for fights. You're getting the opportunities. No one else is getting opportunities in, um, in the climate like it is now. Do you know what I mean? No one's getting opportunities. You're calling for fights on social media. You get offered the fight and then you turn it down. doesn't make sense to me. How frustrating is that for you? Do you know what? It's, it's not really... For, with fighters calling me out and then turning, turning the fight down, it's not frustrating for me because... It just shows that you're not about it. You're not what the person that you say you are on social media. You're, you're not. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've had a lot of fighters turn this turn the fight down with me. Um, for my my professional career, um, I've for this fight I've had for this fight and for the Jez Smith fight, we've offered this guy twice. Um, and he's turned the fight down with me. Uh, he's a former world champion or uh, world title challenger, former. Um, British and Commonwealth champions, you know what I mean? So I, I get a lot of people turn their face down. That's very frustrating because I just want to fight. I want to prove myself. I want to I want to be in good fights. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I also understand that I'm new to the pro game, nearly three years, ain't no. Um, so I, I do got to take my time, got to have the right learning fights at the right time and um, and pro- I'm progressing this day. So I got to take my time as well as um, wanting to be in big fights. <laughs> You're very accepting of the fact you're new in your eight and zero. As much as you learn a lot during fight nights, the hard work's done in the gym, and you've had some valuable experience this year. Some world class sparring by a world with a world champion, Billy Joe Saunders. How was that in terms of experience? As I know, obviously Billy Joe had his own motives to have you in camp, but. Obviously, it's world class experience for you. You were learning something; it was valuable to you. How was that whole experience in Spain? Yeah, it was unreal. Um, I learned so much. Um, I, I just went out there, and I, I didn't focus on. Although I was out there to help Billy Joe and prepare for the Canelo fight, a lot of people think I've got a very similar style to Canelo. Um, I didn't go out there and focus on trying to be Canelo Alvarez. I went out there to be the best Kevin Ojarko. Um, and if that was good enough for Bill, then it was good enough. If not, then it's not. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I went out there and I learned so much off Billy. Um, I just I soaked it all up. I asked questions. Uh, I learned so much in sparring and training and seeing how, how he trained and what it takes to be at that level. So it was a good experience for me. Um, I know what happens in sparring stays in sparring, but Billy Joe being Billy Joe decided to jump on Insta and discuss knockdowns and discussing how good you were in sparring. That must have been a compliment and a confidence booster as well for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's good for a two-week world champion to 
um, <laughs> go on his Instagram and, and tell people um, how tough I was giving it to him and Spawn. And um, do you know what? We had very competitive spars and it was it was unreal. It was an unreal experience for me. Do you know what I mean? But he's in great shape. Um, and it just brought the best out of me. And I hope I brought the best out of him. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's good to get compliments off Billy Joe because he's a fighter that I've, I've always looked up to. Um, I've always loved his style um, and I've always wanted the team to do well. So to be uh, to be asked to go out there and, and help him for the biggest fight of his career was was a um, compliment to me, do you know what I mean? Fight weekend coming up, how do you see that fight going down? Trying not to be subjective because I'd say I'm team BJS, I'm Billy Joe Saunders' mate, I want him to win that fight. How do you see that fight going down? With all the, you've seen the issues with the ring, the size of the ring, you've seen I was, all, everything yeah. against him, the judges. How do you see it? What do you reckon is going to go down? I always I always keep it real. Um, this is in no imagination uh, an easy fight for Billy Joe Saunders, but it's in no imagination that it's an easy fight for Kyle Alvarez. Um, personally, I do feel that Billy Joe Saunders can pull off an upset. I genuinely, hand on heart, do feel that he's got the boxing ability, boxing brain. Um, He's trained so hard. My strength coach is, is out there um, as his strength coach now. Um, and I've been talking to him, asking what shape he's in, seeing what shape he was in six weeks ago, seven weeks ago in Spain, knowing that he is in the best shape that he's ever been in. So I do feel like Billy Joe Saunders will give Canelo Alvarez the biggest of troubles he's ever had in a boxing ring. Um, and I do feel like he can, he can pull an upset off. Whether he gets a decision out there is another thing. I feel like he has to absolutely run away with it to to get a decision out there. Um, but listen, there's no shame if if it doesn't go his way, there's no shame in losing to Canelo Alvarez. And if Canelo Alvarez goes out there and convincingly beats Billy Joe Saunders, Canelo has solidified his place in being the pound for pound champion and and showing that he is without doubt the best boxer in the world at the moment. Um, I feel like he he'll prove to everyone how good he is, even though everyone knows how good he is, but that I don't think there'll be a fighter to beat him if he gets free Billy Joe Saunders easily. Um, but I don't see it going that way. I think it's going to be a very tough fight. Um, and I, I, I see uh, Billy Joe Saunders winning on points. Billy Joe and the team have already started on Canelo. I've seen they've already got, like, they're already teaching Canelo a few things. Um, Armour Carney yesterday in the lounge with a group of them. Heckling Canelo as he walked past. They've taught Canelo English. All of a sudden, Canelo swearing back in English. It's it started. When we're, we're in fight week, it started. I think I think there's going to be an interesting fight week. We've still got a few days to go before the big night. Let's hope Billy Joe can do what he needs to do. Um, yeah, definitely. Do you know what? It's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of main games that you got to play at the top, and Billy Joe Saunders is the best at doing so. If you can get an advantage by knocking your opponent off and Get under the skin, then then why not? But I'm excited to see to seeing the the way in and stuff like that. It should, it should be exciting. You didn't end up in Spain on the wrong side of any of his pranks, did you? No, I didn't. Thankfully, he's thankfully had not. me looking up YouTube videos about Greg Marriott versus Muhammad Ali. Oh, that was a great fight. Have you not seen that? Yeah, do you know it's like Billy? Yeah. Going, no, no, look it up. I swear to you, it's a great fight. Muhammad Ali, Greg Marriott, and you got Greg laughing in the background. I know who Greg is, Billy. Uh, all right, then. Uh, funny, though. It's just the way Billy is. Um, nicknames. I've heard you've been called the Irish Canelo. I've heard you called the Black Thunder. What is the nickname you are settled with? No, my, my nickname is Black Thunder. That's my boxing name. It's been my boxing name um, since my pro debut. Black Thunder, even Black Thunder Jocko. Um, people just like to brand me as the Irish Canelo. Um, but no, it's, 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 uh, it's Black Thunder. And where did the Black Thunder nickname come from? Who gave it? Do you know it? what? Or did you pick it I out? Want I want Emma to call me that. So you have to give the person credit. Who gave it? Nah, I'll, I'll, I'll give the person credit. Do you know what? Um, I've never had a boxing name. Um, and I I, uh, I always thought when I turn pro, I want something original. But I was after my WSB fight in the amateurs, I was out with one of my friends. Um, we were having a couple of drinks. And he he had one too many, and um, he started calling me Black Thunder. Just on that night, just started calling me Black Thunder, and it's it's just stuck. I just I said to him that that's gonna be my boxing name. 
it's an original name. No one's ever had it. No one's ever used it. And do you know what? I feel like it. It. Um. It suited. Like it's just suited me because fun there's noise. You know what I mean, and when you when you hear me punch, you hear a lot of noise. You know what I mean? So I felt like it. Um. It, it suits me well. I'm not gonna let you get away with it because the man deserves your pal deserves royalties. You have to name them. They're gonna get royalties David. every time that name's used. <laughs> David Riley. David well, Riley. David, every time you get a percentage, I'm on a percentage for bringing you in on royalties. <laughs> and me and David are now partners in on that name. Um, yeah. I know you're training. I know you're in London. I appreciate all the time you've given us today. Um, I'd like to open this up for you to give anyone you want to give a shout out to, including yourself and your social media handles, so that people get behind the journey and follow it. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to give a big shout out to um, all my sponsors, um, Hands Plum and Heaton, Mental Recruitment. That was a lot. Uh, Mental Recruitment, uh, Queensbury, um, Bot, Colour Master, Only Funeral Drag, there's Ink City Gym, and Leap 76. Um, I want to give a big shout out to Leap76. Um, there's a there's a guy called Chris who's he's actually my main performance coach. Um, and we've we've been doing a, a lot of work um this camp and it's just it's improved me as a fighter so much. It's um it's made me a lot a happier fighter. Um and it's it's I've become a lot even though I've all, I've always been mentally strong, I've always been somebody who's been mentally strong. Um I just see so much improvements um, working with Chris, and um, it, I just I, I'm I'm looking forward to the future and working working with him through bigger fights to to see how much I improve because this camp has been by far the the happiest and, and best I've performed. And they say a, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter, and if you ask my my small partners, that's that's very true because I haven't performed as good in a camp um, ever in my whole boxing career. I've never been as fit. As happy as dangerous and spawn, and I feel like um, Chris has played a part a part in that, um, making me a, a very happy fighter and and helping perform my my mind and and it just it's it's something that even though I didn't feel at the time that I needed, I'm glad that um, I started working with Chris because I can see so much uh, big improvements already. And following the journey, your social media handles, um, black blackfonder.ca on. Uh, on Instagram and then it's keeping a jarco um, on Facebook and, and Twitter. Just follow the blue tick. Follow the blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to be there at the title fight. Um, we wish you the best of luck against the unnamed opponent on the unnamed date, but we'll be following it. We're excited by the journey. Keep training hard. Keep working hard. You are, uh, I hate using the word prospect because that's, I think you're going to pass that very quickly. I think you're an exciting prospect. You're one to watch for 2021 and beyond. Thank you for your time today, brother. No problem at all. Thank you for the compliments. I really appreciate that. And thank you for taking the time to interview me.